Hello, I'm Alex and welcome to another video about software design. One of the biggest problems that developers have is that they get too overwhelmed when it comes to software design. When they're building, for example, their like side project or their uh, their startup, they are trying to implement the same design practices that we use when we are building software in an, in an enterprise. And this often makes them fall into analysis paralysis. The same way uh, developers working in like a big corporation can try to build software there the same way that they would do in like a small company or like a web agency or a startup and they're gonna struggle again because of that. Today I'm going to try to add a little bit more context and help you create some principles about how you want to approach this. Perhaps the biggest flaw when we are teaching uh, engineers software design is that we are doing this without context. We are teaching them design patterns, we're te teaching them uh, structural approaches, architectural approaches, things like he uh, hexagonal architecture, clean architecture, and other things like that. But we do not give them enough context about how this should be applied, when uh, and why we're doing this. Uh, the whole reason, like the whole reason why we are uh, trying to split code in a certain way, why we are splitting responsibilities, why we're so focused on naming conventions and like applying the same patterns to, sim to um, pro problems that we're uh, solving in a similar way is that we are doing this to communicate with other uh, engineers. Design patterns in software design is a tool for communication. The way that you structure your code is going to help other engineers in the future reason about it, maintain it, and extend it. And the fundamental question that I use when I'm trying to decide how deeply I should think about software design and how well I should structure an application um, is I'm asking myself, how long do I realistically expect this to live in production? When, when I'm working for a startup or when I'm building like a side project of mine, um, I do not realistically expect this software to live for a very long time. So a startup may pivot in the next six months. They may pivot in the next month, who knows. A startup may quickly change its goals and the way that it approaches uh, business and what you're building right now may quickly become obsolete. So you don't need to apply the same principles for longevity and structure in, uh, like in, a, in an environment in which you expect to throw this code out the window. Same goes for things like prototypes. But in an enterprise, uh, the problem there is that your code is going to live for many years. Like you'd be surprised how long your code can live in a corporation. In, uh, in an environment like this, it's important to create some structure and it's important to create some uh, better communication mechanisms in your code so other engineers who inherit your code or even you after a year or, or, or two may be able to reason about what you're doing. Like it's all a matter of maintenance. When you are building uh, like a prototype for an application you would not build it in a way that you would implement like a service in some complex uh, corporate architecture. So let's start with some more practical examples. Now, there's this architect called Christopher Alexander who came up with the idea of pattern languages in the first place. I, like He had this idea that there are certain principles and patterns that need to be applied uh, when it comes to architecting buildings that make them livable and better, uh, better spaces in general. Uh, and this idea is actually what uh, led to uh, design patterns being created in the software engineering field. Uh, and he said that you would not build skyscrapers the same way that you would build houses. Like when it comes to a, a place where people need to live and they need to spend their, spend their time, these places need to be uh, habitable. People need to be able to uh, mold these spaces to their needs and change them and organize them in a way that helps them like have a better life. And when you are building like a side hustle, when you're building like your own software as a service or something like this, um, you need to make sure that this application and the code base is habitable for you. Or when you are like the solo developer at, uh, at a startup or at, at like a small company or when you're building a prototype, when you are the person who is going to be working on this and you do not expect it to uh, live for like years uh, in the future, you need to make sure that this uh, code base is habitable. And what this means differs from one person to another. Uh, basically, you need to make sure that um, you can find your way in this application and it fits the mental models that work best for your, uh, like for your understanding of, uh, of software. Let's take a REST API, for example. Uh, the way that I structure a REST API when I'm working on one of my projects is that I'm putting every handler in like a 
uh, in a different file and I'm putting all the logic there like the HTTP logic like the business logic even data uh, even database logic and I'm just putting each handler in a, in, in a separate file and this helps me reason about the whole thing better now there are other engineers who um, when it comes to their personal projects they prefer to put everything in like a single file and it can grow up to two three thousand lines of code long and this works for them because it's easier for them to reason about it it's easier for them to uh, reuse logic this way and it's easier for them like to to work when everything is put together me personally i get overwhelmed when i try to do this uh i i don't like looking at too much code i don't like scrolling i want to be able to look at one piece of code on my screen and understand what uh, what it's doing so this is why i use this approach but what makes a code base habitable for me and habitable habitable for you may be quite different so when you are building your own project you need to focus on like the principles and the patterns that work for you for example I try not to use classes because I have a easier time working with uh, simple functions and objects I try to write as many pure functions as possible and try to contain like the side effects there are other people who prefer to like use classes for things like it's easier for them to, to reason about logic when they see when they see that it's grouped in classes and they use uh, like inheritance in the other uh, OOP mechanisms to like to implement it. There is not a single way that works so do not get trapped into in like analysis paralysis D don't think that you need like MVC or like a specific approach like to build your application just pick something that works for you pick something that you understand when you're building like a house in the countryside you would not approach it like you would build a skyscraper because this is a place that you want to live in this is a place that like you want to make a home for yourself basically in that code base something that you can work on something you can change something that you are Gonna have fun extending in the future but when you are building like uh, a corp an, an, an application for a corporation like things get a little bit different what you're gonna build is not only gonna be used by you there are gonna be a lot of other people that are gonna be changing this in the future uh, and this also is going to live for quite a long time I have written services uh, for corporations that I know for a fact are still used seven or eight years later and the fact that I structured them well back then is what's helping my colleagues still maintain them right now without having to rewrite them or change like the whole architecture of them. when you are building a startup you do not need to uh, do ports and adapters you do not have to do like clean architecture these things help when you are building something that is going to live for a long time uh, when you are building like when you're working in a team and you expect this to and you ex expect your work to live longer then you need to uh, apply these principles because uh, when someone else has to change something in, in an application that you've built when someone has to go and maintain or extend something that you've created it will be easier for them like to make the change when your code is modularized when it is split by responsibilities when you have added like layers when you have created like a separate business layer or when, and when you're created when you've created a separate like repository when you're doing the database work so for example if they have to change uh, like a small bit in like the business logic the way that you're looping over like something that the way that you're parsing data or like the format of like the HTTP response they can find the function or the class or the object or whatever it is in your language uh, that is responsible for this and they can only make the change there they can address the tests for this and then they can ship it without having to understand like the whole other part of the code base when you're building at a startup you do not know if this company is going to be doing the same thing six months down the line the thought that you put in this design can quickly become obsolete like what you should be stressing is making the code base habitable uh, again when i'm saying when i'm saying that you should not put that much structure in your code it doesn't mean that you should be making a mess it doesn't mean that you should be uh, creating sloppy work like you still need to put thought into your design otherwise like you yourself are going to get lost but you, you you do not have to think about like how to apply the strategy design pattern or how to apply the builder design pattern uh, because your code like your business will not benefit from this like a corporation benefits from your code having structure even if this means that it takes you a little longer to create it even if this means that like it's a little bit more boilerplate because you're building for the future you're building like you're building this communication language that will allow people to then like make changes to it the most difficult thing like the most difficult design choices come when you are in the middle for example when you are not when you're in a big corporation there are established standards about usually like about how things need to be built and then you just follow the standards when you're building in a startup you accept that you're 
uh, valuing speed over everything else. So you're just focused on speed. Uh, but when you're like in just some regular company, maybe it's not maybe it's not even a technical company. Maybe maybe it's a scale up. Maybe you're building like an ERP for a company that is selling clothing or something like that. I don't know. This is where you have to make some difficult decisions. Of course, the business is going to value speed. Like they're gonna value how quickly you can solve like the specific business problems that they have. But at the same time, you need to be aware that in order to support this business over like a long period of time, um, you still need to build, build software that is robust enough to allow you to go back and change it. I have created like a set of principles that I follow when I'm in doubt. Like when I'm in, the, in these difficult situations where I'm not sure if I'm like, do I uh, lean more towards maintainability? Do I, lean, do I lean more towards speed? Like what do I, what do, I do? Um, in these situations, I just try to focus on putting layers. So this means that I try to put wedges between the different technical responsibilities of my application. So when I, for example, take a REST API, um, uh, I'm going to try to split like the HTTP logic, the business logic and the domain logic in like three separate functions. You do not, you do not need to go overboard. You do not need to create like classes and uh, like uh, abstractions and complex hierarchies. You just need like to split it into functions. Like I'm not going to have like a super uh, like rigid clean architecture structure with ports and adapters and everything, but I can like make changes to smaller part of parts of the application and I can like, I have this coherency and this small like modularization. So if I need to make a change to the business logic, I have it all in one place and I can see how like the business logic of this clothing company, for example, works without need, without needing to bother with like details about the database. So this is what I do usually. I try to split like the HTTP logic, which is like the uh, request handlers, for example, from the main logic, from uh, database logic. At, uh, but again, this is a, uh, an example that is scoped to the REST API. So how does this work in the UI, for example? If you have to build a React application the same way, I would try to isolate like the markup. Like when you have a component, I would try to keep the component as lean as possible. Um, like just make the component seem like it's only receiving data from like a custom hook or functions or props and how it visualizes them and like the, 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 the handler functions it calls. When you have to build like a script, a cron job, whatever it is, just try to put some minimal structure that is, make, that is helping you reason about okay, when is this logic that I'm writing communicating with external sources? So when is it receiving a request? When is it sending like a request to another place? Where, when is it writing to a database? Just making sure that I understand when my logic is communicating with something that is out of my control. Uh, and I have found that just trying to create this split between like business logic and the rest of your applications and creating some layers around that is helping me build more maintainable applications. Okay, to summarize things, if you are an indie hacker or if you are a developer who is building their own project on the side, focus on habitability. Focus on um, like building a code base that you can live in, focus on building a code base that you can maintain and extend regardless of what other engineers are telling you about best practices and about structure, design and everything else. However, when you are building something in like a more corporate environment or something like for a larger company, follow the standards that have been created there. Or if there are no standards, create standards, like enforce a specific structure. You don't need to always be building software the same way. Like you can build software one way in your nine to five and then for your own project or uh, and then for your own projects, you can do it differently. So yeah, I hope this helps you. I hope it unblocks you and like gets you out of analysis paralysis. And again, don't forget, like if you're uh, an engineer who is used to like the corporate way of building software, don't forget that smaller companies and smaller projects have different needs. Uh, that's gonna be all for, uh, all for today. And if you wanna read more about software design, I have written a few books about it and I'm gonna link them in the description of the video. So make sure to check them out. Thank you.